Welcome to the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date is May 13th, 2019. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and ring that bell for future updates. And also, if you'd like, on our website here, we have a Twitter link. We'd like for you to subscribe to that, too, and follow us on there. And we do post charts and alerts on there. And Miss Vegas is going to give us our watch list. Well, guys, I got to tell you, Monday's trading is over and the week started off with yet another impressive drop of the stock market. Uh, so, you know, what are we going to do? These are uh, trade wars and China tariff retaliations. So uh, I guess, you know what, all we can do is trade what charts look good. And, you know, you got to just ignore the noise and not let it affect your trading and thinking. Uh, just look for opportunities and setups that, you know what, while that's going on behind the scenes, look for setups that are bullish. So we're going to talk about some stocks here that look bullish and looking for continuation um, to hopefully, you know, get yourself focused. So let's get started. So we're going to talk about Avon, AVP, Mara, CTHR, PTN, and CVRS. Those are the top five today at five. So let's get started with AVP. Well, you know what, AVP, we talked about in yesterday's video, and um, I did mention it in our chat service um, that, you know, this was a really good swing trade, and we had it from $3.01, and you know what, I still like the chart, still like the bullishness of the setup. Um, you know, it had a nice move today, suddenly. All of a sudden, it just moved up, and so, you know what, take a look, and uh, you may like the chart. Jim said he actually saw an Avon store yesterday. But I'm going to let Jim talk about this chart because I still like the way it's looking. Uh, on the options side, for those of you that like options, especially if you have a smaller account, I just want to mention that with Avon in particular, um, the 250 strike, uh, so that's the in the money option call, uh, these ones expire May 31st, so till the end of the month. And the 250 strike is currently going for um, high of day was 71 cents. So they're going anywhere from like 68 to 75 cents. So we've had those ones from last week, uh, around 50 cents. So they're up about 20 cents right now, but still, I think, uh, reasonably priced, huge open interest on those ones in particular because they're in the money and they don't expire till the end of the month. So you might want to check them out. The other one that you might want to check that's a little cheaper uh, would be the $3 calls, Ex same expiry, May 31st, and those ones are going for $0.35. Cents. So if you like options and you prefer to buy that as opposed to the stock, you may want to check that out. So, Jim, I'm going to turn it over to you to talk to us about the Avon chart, please. Oh, yes. Well, I'm gonna post, right. first I'm going to post the yearly just to make it real fast and show you what we've done here. We bounced off that 130 from that sell-off we had back in December, and she created it kind of like a, a lower high with with maybe about the equal equilibrium of the of the lower low and then higher high on this last month. So that looks pretty good. We got a double top resistance here that we got to break at 322 to bring it up to the next level on the yearly high, which is 336 to 341. So we got to break this 322, and it looked like we tried to do it today again. We did try to do it Friday. We did have a pullback right to support, and I'm going to post that here on the daily three-minute. You can see we did pull back to that 305, 301 area, and she held pretty good. And then later in the day, she went ahead and had her pretty good little bounce back up to that resistance level. And we did get a higher high than what we had on Friday, so not by much, by a penny, but we did kind of we're closed up here it's looking pretty good we're at 318 right now but after hours we jumped up to about 324 after we pulled back to that 20 SMA and it looks a little bit different on a minute I always like to look at it too that's how I view my day trading so we got to break that 322 resistance and support level on this is going to be right in this little channel of 302 to 305 with a pivot point area right around the 312 and 312 to maybe around 314 is going to be your little first support area. And we got to break the resistance of 322. And the next one we're going to talk about, we mentioned also in the aftermarket report on Sunday, and that's M-A-R-A -A with the, the coin run. 
Yeah. So you know what? Mara had a nice had a nice run. I mean, obviously it's connected with crypto and we saw that, you know, Bitcoin was emerging uh today um as China stocks pulled back. I mean, I don't know where can this go? Can this have a repeat of 2017? I mean, who knows? It's quite a bit of a rally actually since April 2019. Um, about the, you know, value of where Bitcoin is. I mean, if you guys remember back in April, um, you know, it was breaking 5,000, then it was followed by 6,000, then 7,000, and it shot to 7,000 on May 12th. And, you know, as of today, what's it at today? Maybe it's getting closer to 8,000 soon. So, uh, you know, Bitcoin's gone up, uh, I would say over 10%, even in the last 24 hours. So, um, when I was looking at the Mara chart, I still like the weekly chart and uh, like it for a swing trade. So I know a lot of people did trade Mara today and uh, bought it in the low threes and then they sold it near 370s and then they probably scalped it three, four times. Um, but I still like the weekly chart, still like where it's going. So um, I'm still bullish on Mara for now. And as long as Bitcoin's still, you know, doing well. Um, it's one of the top crypto charts out there. And I see that it looks to me that the shares on Mara have been accumulated over the last couple of weeks based on what's happening out there. Um, uh, but Jim, let's hear about Mara because I know you talked to us about Mara even yesterday. You gave us some supports or you actually gave us 302, 341, 338. Bingo, bingo, bingo. Every single one of those hit today. Yep. So that was amazing. Um, so what can you tell us now? Because, you know, we hit all those numbers and it's pulled back to about 338. Is that going to be, let's say, the new support? And what can you tell the viewers out there that are still maybe holding Mara or thinking about it? Well, the 20-day chart kind of tells the story all in itself. And we had to get up to that 356 area to break that from the two previous highs we had on that 20-day, actually three. So we broke that today and then we ran up to 385, which was at I had a 384 resistance right here, and then she pulled back most of the day, but I was scalping this on the way up and on the way down. As you can tell, we had a couple good knives on it today. We ran all the way up from the close yesterday of that high level, which was right around $3, 297 and then after hours she jumped up on Friday, and then pre-market she jumped up, I mean, this morning, so I knew it was pretty active, and she fell back and hit that 100 SMA and then started bouncing up and rode up on the 20 most of the day and then once it hit that 385 resistance it pulled back and we had this little knife I got out of it right before that knife came I noticed the the weakness when this 20 day started to curl down and then when we hit that knife hit that 100 SMA I went ahead and jumped back in it and scalped it for a few pennies then we had another knife and it brought back down to support level right around the 337 to 341 so I was kind of counting on that pretty well much of the day and bouncing it up and just collecting little pennies on it but you know it, it adds up it adds up when you're making 30 40 bucks a scalp and then I did this about five or six times today and then at the end of the day I decided to get back in it and it knived on me so I took about a $50 loss on this last knife and I went ahead and sold it because I don't like to hold much anything after hours but we did bounce down to this support level of 332, and I'm going to magnify that up a little bit. You can see the pretty nasty little knife it took after that major run. It ran from 337, um, then broke my resistance at 346, 349, and then ran on 363. So I thought I was going to get in and have another chance at it here at 350. I got in right around 347, if I remember right. And then it bounced down a little bit and bounced back up. And I thought it was going to get a break. And then, bam, this big fat knife came in. Brought it back down to 332. And I went ahead and got out of it right around the 336 area. And took a small loss on it. Which is okay with me because I wasn't really heavily invested at 500 shares. And so, well, we're sitting now at 338. The only thing we can do now is just kind of watch, see what happens tomorrow see if the coins are still going to run with this negative market but what we would need to do is get back up here to the, around the 349 area if we can get up to that 349 then we'll start breaking those new resistances and I'm going to pull this up to a 20 day one more time so I'm thinking 
it's it's kind of just hard to say after that hard knife at the end of the day. It kind of clustered me up a little bit in my thoughts. So I'm not going to say it's going to go you know, lower than 320. 320 should be your support level, and it should bounce back up and create an equilibrium into this resistance up here at 356. And that's where I want to see it tomorrow, if it doesn't break out sooner tomorrow morning. And that's going to be Mara. And the next one we're going to talk about is CTHR. Yeah, so you know what? I have never traded this stock, CTHR. This is called Charles and Colvard. This is a jewelry company. And so for you ladies or even gentlemen that love to buy jewelry for your other half, uh, you may want to check out the website. Uh, but nevertheless, the reason I like this stock is I like that it made a new 52-week high. And uh, I was actually looking at the weekly chart. I was quite impressed with this. Uh, first of all, uh, let's look at today's volume on CTHR. And you will see that the volume on it was 2.68 million. So I do see a volume surge here. Uh, we also see, you know, it made new 52-week highs last week. It's had its earnings. Uh, it's had a pocket pivot. Um, everything's bullish. Like the MACD was turned up. And I just like the fact that it's on a nice new uptrend. So I know it's pulled back from the 208 was the high today. Um, so I was looking to see for a continuation. So I uh, have a swing trade here in, in this uh, stock from actually 198. So I kind of hear want to hear what Jim's going to say about this one and uh, go from there so we can have some support resistance lines here. Well, what sounds good about it right now is I'm looking at the 52 week high and it said it had this is its third consecutive quarter of profitability which probably gave it a bullish run here in the last couple of days you see we've bounced off this 135 level and that was just above the yearly resistance of 127 and it ran all the way up to 208 and then we kind of have a big wick here on this candle so that kind of alerts me a little bit so what I think we got to do is break that 190 area to get it back up to this 208 but you know sometimes when you have a big wick like that you would kind of almost expect a smaller pullback so we're going to pull up the 20 day and look at it real fast and you can see here in the last two days we have the support level right here at 169 that's going to be your 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 hot that's the high that we had on friday and then she went ahead and pulled back this morning pre-market right about 139 so that's a good good 70 cent bounce 60 cent bounce all the way up to 208 midday and then three quarters of the day and then we had those two red candles on a hour chart and we closed up here with a uh, oh a butterfly candle at the end of the day after market which means this thing could bounce back up and hit the resistance level that we need to see right here at 202 to break that 208 207 208 so this is going to be your low support right at 169. Your second is going to be right around the 180, 179 area. We're pivot pointing right here at the first support at 190. You could maybe pull back to 187, 186, so that ain't much. And we got to break the resistance of 202 to break the, 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 the yearly high resistance of 207. So that's what I see on T A T C T H R, and it is time to buy the ladies the jewelry. And the next one we're going to talk about is one of Vegas' favorites. She's been in for a while, and that's PTN. Okay, so PTN, you know, uh, talk to you guys about this one too. Still bringing it up because we talked about it actually last week on Wednesday. Mentioned that it's a 52-week high, and you know what? The stock's still going. I mean, it's a bit of a slow grinder, um, but you know what? Uh, the put for date is coming up um, on uh, June 24th. So I do want to mention, okay, so people first of all ask, what does this even mean, P-D-U-F-A? Um, so it's a short acronym, but it means Prescription Drug User Fee Act, okay? So what happens when this event takes place, um, the company is basically meeting with the FDA, okay, the Federal Drug Administration, and they're meeting with them to review the new drugs. And usually what happens is the FDA is normally given 10 months to review the drug. So they've already had 
let's say PTN's drug with the under review. And um, then the if the drug is selected for priority review, then they're given six months to review the drug. And then what happens is after that, they have um, an NDA um, information. So you can actually you know, get more information if you want to ever go to the website for the PUDFA. They have an FDA calendar tracker um, that you can also check out. Uh, but what happens, you know, with the FDA, you know, these they have an advisory committee for phase two and three trail uh, trial. So um, they will then meet with, I guess, you know, usually like medical officers of the company and other maybe senior executives, and then they give their decision on what their thoughts are with regards to the results of the drug. So I guess uh, this is usually exciting times for companies. Sometimes I'll tell you it's not exciting because they'll actually say, sorry, um, we're not approving this or sorry, we're not letting you go to phase two or sorry, we're not letting you go to phase three, which is the commercial piece. Um, so sometimes this is a make or break for the company. So with regards to PTN, their date with FDA is uh, June 24th. And so hopefully there'll be some good news. Again, this could be not good news, but so far uh, we're hoping good news. Uh, so stay tuned for that. But regardless of that, at the moment, the chart is in a new 52 week high and hence I like it. So even if you put the PDUFA um, event off to the side, the chart warrants a continuation on the stock. So Jim, over to you on PTN because this is uncharted territory here. Yeah, we've been alerted for this stock for a while now and it was down here uh, at a buck down here at 104 on this 20 day chart. So we've had a nice little run in that 20 days. I'm gonna pull up the yearly, let you look at it. Low support was down here at 67. We had a triple bottom breakout and it did kind of look like a descending pattern with a triple bottom squeeze and it hit it right here and then she's popped up from that 67 all the way up to today's high which is a year high of 151. We're going to look at support levels on it but we got to break a resistance and get up to that 159 area and I'm just going to pull up a three year chart just to have one fast look at it. You see where I got that 159 at? That's right here from last year. We hit that high so that's what we've got to break to get past that 159. We'd like to see a double top breakout. If not, support level is going to be, first support is going to be right here around 140. Your second one's going to be right here around 129. And your, or your second one right around 134 with your, your third one right here at 130. That 129, 130 area. So those are your two supports that, that really matter. It's going to be that 141. If not, if not, it's going to be that 130. I don't want to see it go any below that. If it does, we're talking about 120. But I want to see it break and create a new high tomorrow and get past that 159. And like Miss Vegas said, this is a slow grinder. But look at these, this weekly, look at the chart. I mean, just the weekly chart, this looks beautiful. Every, every week almost prevailed a higher high. We've had two times where it kind of consolidated a little bit. But then we've had the big breakout here in the past three days from that 117, 120 area. So this is PTN. Keep it on watch. I really like to see a double top breakout at 159. Yeah, and also keep a watch, Tim, and look at that volume. I mean, PTN's volume yep. uh, normally isn't always this high. Like today alone was, you know, 4.7 million. Yep. Uh, I actually haven't seen it have that kind of volume. This is the highest volume I have seen. Uh, on the stock, actually, in the past, ooh, let me see. Hmm. Do you know the last time it had volume like this or close to this was back in November 2018. It had 4.969 million. So pretty much back to November. And back then in November, the stock was 72 cents and made a high of 92. So, I mean, it's come a long way from there. Um, but, yeah, so keep that on watch. Also, just to comment about the... Uh, the PUDFA date. I mean, obviously, companies do disclose the date of, um, you know, when it's going to happen. But just so you know, it's not unusual sometimes for the FDA to sometimes extend the deadline to review the drug. 
So we have um, PTN of June 24. Sometimes, um, you know, remember that these dates are not set in stone. It's not unheard of for the dates to be extended. This generally will happen if the FDA needs more time to complete the review process because sometimes there's a major amendment in a new drug application. Um, so, you know, we'll wait and see. We have June 24, so expect more excitement with the stock, especially like if there's a continuation on the stock, but then nothing goes on. Watch before like June 24th, you'll probably see some more hype around the stock only because uh, the put for date is imminent. It can also give sometimes investors an edge and help them time their upcoming stock purchases. So sometimes people will trade this, scalp it, get out of it, but then the same traders will come back closer to june 24th so you'll see we'll talk about this you'll see uh closer to the put for date we'll see where ptn is at okay and last but not least let's talk about cvrs well 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 cvrs what a chart this is another one i mean this one here is corindus vascular robotics uh we've mentioned you know that robotics are hot for 2019 especially in the medical appliance and equipment company and, uh, you know, I have actually talked about this one in particular in the past because this is the one that has the robotics to do um, vascular robotics. And if you go to their website, really, really cool. And you can actually see what they do. And they have robotic capabilities and they actually can train uh, people remotely, like other surgeons and physicians remotely on how to use the robotics here. So this is a really interesting product. Um, but the reason I bring this one again, it just like it just made another new 52 week high. Um, they also did uh, report, I think they had their earnings already reported and uh, they did report that on May 7th. And they did mention that the revenues did total $3 million, including sales and installation of nine core path systems. And um, they also did complete their first ever clinical robotic assisted coronary intervention. And this was a procedure in partnership with a company in Japan. And um, this was done at the Kirum University Hospital. And they're very pleased with the positive trends and the usage of their technology in the first quarter of 2019. They actually have 11 purchase orders for the new GRX system and they've received a record number of disposable cassettes for the um, quarter. So uh, there are a lot of customers opting for service agreements, which looks like that they're committed to the robotic platform. So it looks really good. Looks like they have a global footprint, they have new installations in Japan and also in Europe. And they believe that um, they will be able to expand their opportunities in the European market. And they have ongoing demonstrations going on at various medical conferences, as well as uh, across various hospitals. So robotics to me is still hot and I think we'll see some more action on this stock. So if you like technology and you like robotics, you should keep a watch on this one. Jim, let's hear about that chart. All right, well, like she says, we've mentioned this a few times and it's definitely up here at a year high today at the 310 level. And we had a real nice little gap up on this on Friday beautiful little gap up from 211 all the way up to about three bucks so that's quite impressive and i'm gonna put a little support line right here at 253 you know what i do want to mention too jim since we're talking about this particular stock and you know yep. i have i have a journal here of all the stocks we talk about and the prices and we talked about this one you know i know we talked about this one and i have it noted here we talked about it on march 14 so less basically um, you know, two months ago, because we're now May, so exactly two months tomorrow. And back then, the stock was $1.76 two months ago. And um, Jim had said we would see 203 and 225. And back then at 176, made 52 week highs. So you can actually see how from two months ago to now, how the company is consistently you know, the stock keeps on growing and growing and growing and the earnings was actually pretty good and they got sales in the pipeline. So sorry to interrupt, but I wanted to just mention like where the stock was two months ago. Uh, that is a, a beautiful, beautiful move. So yep. good work. Yep. 
it did kind of pull back a little bit but that's always a good time to get in it did bounce off that 20 SMA on a three month chart so let's go up to the uh, 20 day I like looking at the 20 day after I look at the yearly we had to break this resistance level last week here at 225 and she did she ran all the way up here on Tuesday or Wednesday bounced up and then kind of just pulled back a little bit for two days Friday and then Friday we had that big bounce pulled back to that support level at 266 so I'm going to put another support right here at 290 and then maybe another one right down right down put it right about there that's where I'm going to go ahead and call it so we've got we're sitting here at a, at a resistance level at 299 you got three support levels that we want to see uh, we don't want to see but if we do see them it will be a good opportunity to get in this trade ones at 266 278 and 290 and then with resistance we do have to break to get it up to that above that that 310 area we're, we're closed right now at 301 but it pulled back to 299 we got to break this little channel of 308 to 310 to get it back up to the 50 week highs and there we are and that's going to be CVRS and that's the last one we talked about today and Miss Vegas is there anything else you'd like to say don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and also appreciate it if you joined us on our Twitter page well you know I just want to say that um, I welcome everyone to come check out the room and listen to the voice and you know you don't have to join there's no pressure from anyone ever um, but I think it's very educational, but I do want to mention, like, I think a lot of times, like right now when the markets are red, um, you know, obviously the mission is to stay green, but you know, there is nothing wrong sometimes if you're actually not trading. And, uh, sometimes, you know, some people feel the need that, oh my God, I have to trade. I'm going to miss out. Uh, what can I trade today? You know, sometimes no trade is actually a good trade. Uh, because you know what? You have to preserve your capital. There is nothing wrong with sitting on your hands and waiting for an opportunity to come to you. I mean, I think the ones we just talked about have some really good strength in them. And I think I kind of see a lot of these sometimes as a swing trade and there's nothing wrong with sometimes not trading. So um, I just wanted to share that because I think sometimes people feel pressure or they're like, oh my God, I didn't really trade much today. I Normally they trade a lot more and, and today, um, you know, they didn't really trade as much and that is okay. There's nothing wrong to sometimes not really trade. And there's going to be days where you're going to be trading so many things. You don't even, you wish you just could trade 20 things and you can only trade five. So you're going to have those experiences come and those moments come. I think what's really important to stay in this trading world is really you have to preserve the capital. So take your time. Don't feel that, oh, you know, some, you know, everyone, you hear people on social media, oh, I made this, I made this, I made that. You are not competing with anyone you're your own competitor so you know what if you don't trade today you don't trade today who cares you know nobody cares take the day off do what you have to do do some errands -E. i know a lot of people sometimes when the markets are red there's two different kinds of traders when the markets are red there's traders that look for really bad like really bottom plays where they know that once maybe some of the nonsense going on with the trade deals maybe something gets resolved they know that the stock will reverse you know, but they have the capital to do it. So sometimes, you know what, if you can't do that and those stocks don't interest you, that's okay. So take the day off. The markets are red. Maybe you're not going to trade and that's nothing wrong with that. You know, take advantage of the market uh, volatility and sometimes do what you have to do and, and then come back when the markets, you feel more comfortable. At the end of the day, you have to be comfortable. Um, and that's, you know, what's important because really, you know what, it is your account, it is your money and you are the manager of your money. So, you know, I just want to mention that and Jim, anything you'd like to add to that? Yeah, we do offer the trade idea scanner in the room and we have a couple other, uh, things that we offer also in the room that, that help out traders. So it's always good to join and see how our scanner works. It does run on voice and Vegas and I are on voice most of the day talking back and forth and inviting people in the room to come on when we have open mic so this is the aftermarket report I just wanted to show you a little bit of evidence of the trade ideas scanner that we run and today's date is May the 13th 
2019 and we love stocks. Thank you.